Now the next man, and we know that this is not about science, they're not doing this for scientific reasons or for climate change, it's all about control. And we do have an expert here with us today, a climate change expert, who's made a mathematical model of climate change over the last 50 years. Now this man is absolutely amazing and he will tell you what the real science is and why this is so unnecessary. Please give a massive round of applause to Paul Burgess. Hi everyone, uh, I have a YouTube channel called Climate Realism by Paul Burgess. That is a not, I don't make a cent out of it, in fact I subsidise it all. And that is where you can go and get the real detail be behind what I'm going to say today. But what I'm going to say is this, uh, and I've been involved in this, I'm 78 now. Well, uh, my qualification is my grandkids for doing this. I make lots of videos. Expo I make lots of videos exposing the false science. And the most fundamental thing I want you to take away is this carbon footprints nonsense. Carbon is actually good. More carbon, more CO2 is actually good. You know. And today, all these conferences, all these COP meetings make no difference at all. If you plot the growth of carbon by the graph that everybody agrees on. There is no change when you have a COP meeting. All these trillion dollars spent on it achieve nothing. Today we are burning more, producing more CO2 than ever before. So why are all these politicians pretending that we're reducing carbon? We're not. But I want to see more of it. Now I'm going to give you an example of some science. 32 scientists in 12 countries with 24 institutions involved. They, they made a study of NASA data, satellite data of the Earth. And they did it over 30 years. And vegetation on Earth grew by 14%. That's the same as two USA land masses going from nothing on them to full of vegetation. And they said two-thirds of that was caused by CO2. That's the sort of benefit. It's why we put CO2 into greenhouses. So the whole basis, the whole bedrock of climate alarmism is wrong. Absolutely wrong. And today, look it up. Look it up on World of Data. Look it up on Google. We have record crops in Africa. Record crops in the Far East. Record rice crops. Record all sorts of crops. And that's because of CO2 right so more co2 is good it also does something else we have been through a co2 famine just pre-industrial revolution when the co2 level was really low the plants were gasping for it they couldn't grow properly we didn't we had starvation in that world they want to go back to we lived really in a peasant community starving and what happens when you give a plant more co2 is it needs less water so that's why the German scientists did a study on the Sahara Desert and found it decreasing in size, not increasing. All the evidence is there for you. Right. Let me give some examples now. I used to be in charge of Wales planning water resources and things. I built a model in the 1970s which really interested me. It was based on really trying to understand the river flows in a rain-fed river system. And in that model, I just give it the solar sun cycle, the 11-year sun cycle. That sparked my interest 50 years ago. Now, if I take droughts, we are now getting less extreme weather than in history, than in our short term, over a few hundred years. It's less extreme. The biggest drought in the UK was 1775. Nothing has come near it since. What's the next biggest drought? 1798. This is the world they want to go back to. What's the next biggest drought? 1808, then 1854, 1887, 1890, 1921. I've just read out the top five droughts, the top worst droughts in British history. And it's the same for floods. They go on about the Pakistan floods. But look at history. And by the way, Pakistan has reduced its forests so much, it's down by, I think, about 90%. Because when you've got poverty, people chop down wood 
people chop down the wood to get the energy and that causes floods but the floods in the past were worse forest fires is a good one you may have heard of a bloke called Biden he came into power and he didn't like the record on forest fires because it's only 20% in America now what it was in the past in 1920s and 30s it was five times higher and this data was on the public government NOAA website so when he came into power do you know what he did he deleted the data prior to it he just deleted the data you'd have to be a nutter a nutter to accept that they actually hide it hurricanes are less tornadoes are well down and let's go on about Antarctica you hear the stories about a high temperature in Antarctica by the way it's true from South America you can get a little blast of wind as it were that brings some hot air to the peninsula Antarctica is now the coldest it's ever been on record check that online it's the coldest it's ever been and actually funny enough more CO2 cools Antarctica but you know that is a fact and that was also established by satellite and by terrestrial observation by a group of scientists in the EU and I quote all these on my website my website not website but my YouTube channel is, desi is designed to give you videos that link the science that anyone can understand and one of the best compliments I had was my 11 year old son understood it and said hey that's not what I'm taught at school and the real sin is teaching children's school this absolute rubbish because for the last 30 years there's been a mass brainwashing movement of children right well, let's go on about drowned islands none of them have drowned 90 percent of them have grown eight percent growth overall Tuvali or Tuvalu I'm not sure how you pronounce it the most prone island in the world the one they featured this is going to go first has grown 2.9 percent but it doesn't stop their leader sitting in a pool of water on a chair saying help help us give us money that's what the whole of the IPCC is about it's controlled by third world countries they even write the scientific report at the end that goes to all the politicians called the summary for policy makers I do a video on that on the coral coral in the world the Great Barrier Reef is now the record healthiest it's ever been in history that we you know in recorded history and coral around the world 80% of it is healthier than it's ever been that's a recent report power generation now what they're doing today is signing contracts with wind and solar to bake in high energy costs for you I'll give you one I'll give you something now you can check they'll say this wind farm can do 10,000 houses or this solar farm can do 5,000 houses it's not true and they say they use off-gem off -gem figures that's true but the off-gem figure has 2.9 of it or 20% will say is electricity and 80% is gas so in other words yeah they can claim they can do 5,000 houses providing those houses of 80% of their energy supplied by gas that they're trying to do away with and this applies I can promise you I've got a video on it this applies to every single claim by every single wind farm and anyone can see through it and so I went to the developers of one there Swansea of a solar farm I went to the developers meeting and I said how much power do you produce they couldn't answer me they couldn't even get the units of power right right that's how bad this is so we're now paying sometimes wind farms 50% of the time not to turn on we have to pay them not to give us the power why because overnight when demand is low and the wind blows the contract says we still got to buy it so we can't buy it we haven't got a use for it you have to keep the grid in balance and so what happens is we have to give it away or we have to pay people to take it we pay Belgium to take the energy from us three, th three wind farms in Scotland were studied by a group of MPs 50% of the time they were paid not to give us power 50% if Ed Miliband and the next Labour government if it comes in has their way they want to treble the wind farms that's going to mean that most of the time all the energy from wind farms is, is going to be paid even though they don't turn on because we're going to have so much overnight energy we can't store and I've done a video on this because no one's doing the maths I could go into detail then as a cheaper way of getting around this 
They're saying, let's pay you not to take the energy between four and six. Up to 10 times the price. It's 33 pence a kilowatt hour for me now. And they've offered me four pounds. Right? That is cheaper. I'll tell you why. Because when the solar farm gets paid, it doesn't get paid solar farm price or wind farm price. It gets paid. It gets paid the highest price on gas that day. And you know, we've gone 50 times the normal price. So everyone gets paid a super high price. It's an absolute con. And these are all being baked in now. The Welsh Government on that solar farm, so I'm now coming to the next point, green. I have been an environmentalist all my life. At the age of 11, I gave pocket money to try and clean up our rivers. I've been involved in that at the highest levels. I was in head office of Wales. I was the 11th employee of the Welsh Water Authority at the time. And I you know, looked into the droughts. I looked into this. I had to design reservoirs, everything. That was my job. And they don't, they, they don't today um, bother when it's green. When it comes to green, the solar farm in Wales now they're proposing is on a 53 acre site with badgers, with an ancient forest, with 11 species of bats. I didn't even know there were that many. And when I asked the developers where's the environment report, there's none. The Welsh government said, you don't need one. You try and get a house built without a bat survey or something. No chance at all. No chance at all. But you can get the green. If it's green, it trashes the environment very often. But they don't understand that. Wind farms in Germany, a study, 200,000 bats killed a year. 200,000 bats a year. 3,500 tons of flying insects. Birds. Many, many birds, especially birds of prey. So I could go on forever about all this. But it's on my YouTube, it's on my YouTube channel in detail if anyone wants to follow. Now, I have tried to have debates with leading professors. In fact, you know, Professor uh, who, who was the best-selling book at the time on Amazon, on climate change. Only to discover they have no understanding of the data. I was absolutely shattered about the lack of understanding. I have tried to debate Extinction Rebellion. I've had two confrontations with them, nice debates. In the first one, they ended up saying, Paul, you're wrong, when the wind doesn't blow, we use gas. So I had Extinction Rebellion supporting gas. In the second one, they said, oh, we can use a new coal method where we can bring in coal power very quickly. So I had Extinction Rebellion supporting coal. That's how mad this world is. Everyone runs away from debate with me. That's my problem. And yeah, when you see my YouTube channel, you'll understand why. And the biggest thing for my YouTube channel is to show it to kids because it's designed for anyone. It really is. But it backs everything I say up with science and evidence. My dream would be to debate, and if the BBC is here, try this. My dream is to debate Ed Miliband on BBC, because he's likely to be in a Labour government, the one controlling all this madness. That's my dream, and there's a challenge. Of course, they won't do that, because the law of the land is, when it comes to climate change, this is the law, this is the law of the land. You cannot, you cannot, you are allowed not to give an even balance of argument when it comes to climate change. You can only present one side. That is a law introduced by Blur into legislation, right? They have decided what the science was 20 years ago. They decided it, and that's not the scientist. And if you argue, like the poem professor who pointed out that the coral reef in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, was the healthiest it's ever been, if you do that, you get sacked. There is now a complete industry of tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of scientists, whose mortgages depend on this alarmism carrying on. It's not true. And I'm willing to debate anybody, full stop. So bring it on, you know, bring it on. I'll debate them, and I'll debate them in public. Right? Thank you.